thank you, Tim. As um, Tim said, I'm Chester Davidson. I'm from Alcoa Corporation. And I'm here representing my colleague, Robert Paulinelli, who resides in Australia and couldn't make it to the forum to make his presentation. So I'm going to start out by giving you uh, um, a current, the current situation of um, Alcoa Corporation. <clears throat> Recently, Alcoa split into two different companies. So Alcoa Corp is now the upstream business, and um, our sister company, Arconic, controls what was Alcoa Inc.'s downstream business. And the downstream business uh, was our aerospace, automotive, defense, and building, building and supplies, etc. The upstream business is um, our bauxite, our alumina, and our smelting business. And we're trying to make our company much simpler than the old corporation that we were in. And so even our values are simple, right? We re reduce them to just three values with three words, act with integrity, operate with excellence, and care for our people. Uh, many of you know that we are the inventors of the original aluminum process. And so, um, the, as an upstream business, we're the world's largest bauxite mining business. We, uh, in our first year of operation, this split took place in 2016, and in our first year of operation, we managed to achieve $11.7 billion in sales, and we are also awarded the Sustainability Leadership Award. Our three segments in the aluminum value chain are bauxite, alumina, and aluminum. And as I stated, we have a lot of bauxite resources uh, across the globe, and, but the division I work in is alumina, and I am the global services manager for the process control systems. We have eight refineries. These eight refineries, three are located in Australia, two in Brazil, one in Spain, one in Saudi Arabia, and one in the US. We have been using wireless as an enabling technology for the last five years. And some of the main objectives that we set ourselves in designing our wireless system was firstly to provide a secure, engineered, and integrated wireless network in all eight refineries. We wanted to make sure that we cover all the process areas that we had 100% coverage. We decided that in order to do a reliable wireless network, we would do, um, we'd make sure that we designed and implemented a network which supported the ISA 100 wireless instrument and sensors. We also wanted to ensure that we support our mobile operators who we found were using more handheld devices. So um, our operators in the field were using tablets and were using smartphones to access information that they needed to make their rounds and our wireless network had to um, support that. We also wanted to make sure that we had wireless connectivity to our existing process control systems and our equipment health monitoring systems. And lastly, when we're thinking of the industrial IoT, we wanted to make sure that in the future, whatever wireless network we had there would be supporting this. Some of the early benefits that we saw were when we were going out in the field to install an instrument, 
we were able to reduce our capital expenditure in the, um, the traditional legacy installation for uh, instrument involve running thousands of feet of cable and a lot of conduit run and cable tray and the associated infrastructure that went with that. And so the first benefit that we saw was a reduction in capital when we were asked to implement instruments across uh, our refineries. The other major benefit was in the time taken to install an instrument. We were being asked to install instruments for testing. If somebody wanted to do a heat balance on a um, heat exchanger, which traditionally had only um, pressure, pressure gauges on it, we were now able to go out there and within two, three days, utilizing our network, we were able to put in pressure and temperature measurement in days rather than in the, um, traditionally it would take six to nine months, depending on where we're located. Some of our plants, like the ones in Suriname, in South America, it would take us like six months to get an instrument from a supplier out into Suriname and in another three or four months to implement it. So when we had a wireless um, network in place, if our chemical engineers were doing some testing and they wanted some additional measurements, we were able to do it rapidly. The other thing is that um, we're able to support our mobile operators using our wireless network. And we expect in the future, at least when we network with other people who are using wireless, that we'd be able to find other opportunities out there. As I stated before, we adhere strictly to the wireless standard and the open communication protocols found in the ISA 100 wireless standard. Um, here I am. Um, I'm showing a heat map of the coverage that we have in our plant, our wage job plant in Western Australia. And I don't know, this is an aerial map of the plant. It covers about 150 acres of land space and uh, the blue here is showing the type of wireless coverage that we achieve. And so with the wireless network that we have installed, we were able to cover all of the process areas. And we are talking about distances of nearly uh, three quarters of a mile by three quarters of a mile. So it's um, a, a pretty large area of coverage. We also superimpose, uh, sorry, we also superimpose an app that we obtained from Cisco that um, showed us the status of our wireless access points that we had at the location. And as you can see, um, we have one in alarm here. And um, looking at this map, we had a real-time indication of the status of all the wraps and WAPs that we had are around um, the location. When implementing the network, we encountered several challenges. The first one was doing a proper upfront engineering and site survey. So we spent a lot of money um, working with a third party vendor to ensure that we did our proper site survey and that we did a good feasibility study and we knew exactly where we wanted to go. Uh, in order to build in the security and robustness that was required for industrial wireless network, 
we um, made sure that we adhere to the segregation that was recommended in the ISO 100 standards. And by that I mean that um, we made sure that all the instruments had access to a wireless access point, no matter um, if we lost a wireless access point out there or not, that we were always, they were always within at least one hop or half a hop from an access point. We also ensured that we spent the time and the money up front to provide training for all the stakeholders. When we mention wireless, most persons were thinking of the wireless that they had at home or the wireless that they had in um, the IT network. And the major difference that we encountered was when we were putting in our industrial wireless, we had to achieve uptime or availability of 100%. Anything else wouldn't be tolerated. And so we had to make sure that we built in redundancy and robustness in the network to achieve the, this 100% this availability. We, um, we needed a good change management system up front, and we had that implemented. One might think that in a plant, you would find a lot of 110 volt AC supplies easily accessible. And we made that assumption that um, going out there, if we only needed 15 or 25 watts for a wireless access point, it would be easy to find that. But we had to um, work with our reliability engineers to harvest power from existing um, power from existing instruments that we had out there. For example, mag flow meters or conductivity meters, which were powered up with um, 110 volt supply. We had to make sure that we went out and um, stole some of the power, as it were, from these without um, doing proper engineering to make sure we had um, proper protection on the circuits. But um, looking at a plant, uh, we uh, needed something like 100 wireless access points in order to give us the network coverage that we, um, we, we, we needed. So one of the takeaway from this is you should never assume that you won't be spending money to provide power when you're um, implementing your wireless network. The other uh, challenge, the other, or you could look at it as an opportunity, is in, while we're doing our physical installation, we thought about how we are gonna ma um, maintain these wireless access points. And we have existing our plant for lighting what we call a break back pole. And so, if you're installing wireless access point on utilizing structures around your plant, you wanna make sure that when it comes to maintaining the wireless access point, you can do it safely. But you don't wanna do it expensively, so you don't wanna be hiring or utilizing bucket trucks to get up to the wireless access point. So we put it on like a hinge um, pole that we normally install lighting on, that we could take it back onto a stable platform or inside a building to work on the wireless access point. The other thing in terms of physical installation was rather than going around and um, installing tall communication power um, towers, we um, elected instead to use the existing physical structure we have in our plant. So if you look around your plant, you find lots of um, points of high elevation. And that was, where, that was where we put our access point.
In looking for instruments, we could find your typical instrument, wireless instruments out there. For example, you can find temperature, you can find pressure, differential pressure transmitters, etc. But um, we wanted to replace our pressure gauges, the standard analog pressure gauges we have in the plant. And so we work with our ISO 100 wireless instrument vendor to develop lightweight wireless pressure transmitters that can be used on the existing pressure taps that we had in our um, process lines to give us um, pressure readings out there. The fact that we had a network, it was an easy installation because we just put the, we just replaced those gauges with these um, wireless pressure transmitter. The other one is, in a lot of our older plants, we, we have safety showers. And for those of us who work in um, chemical plants, a safety shower is a very important device because when someone is contacted by a corrosive liquid like slurry or green liquor, in our process, in the beer process, we use a lot of caustic at high concentration. And so if somebody gets contacted with a, with a corrosive liquid, you're going to get a chemical burn very quickly. And so you want to utilize a safety shower. But while use, utilizing a safety shower, you need to alert the, um, the control room and who would, um, in the old days, alert the emergency management people, whether it be the medical people, to get out there and to attend to the person who was contacted by this corrosive liquid. So we came up with the idea of installing panic buttons on all our safety showers, on all our eyewash stations. But to do that would involve running miles of cable and miles of conduit. And so when we put in our wireless network, we had to work with a vendor to develop a safety shower panic button. And we have installed like 750 of these in our plant in Saudi Arabia. And we are in the process of installing these. I have it as a mandatory requirement worldwide on our safety devices. We also worked with um, this supplier to develop an ISO 100 wireless serial interface that will work with some analyzers that are special to our industry. We use um, online <clears throat> liquor analyzers that we develop in-house and also we use it on mud level gauges that are not um, available commercially um, off the shelf. And so we had to um, go develop these. And in the future, we're working with these same vendors to give us some power transducers that we use to retrofit or, retrofit or motor control centers. Um, what I'm displaying here is um, a pressure measurement that we um, were able to um, obtain in just two hours from our process, utilizing our wireless network. So if you think of where I'm coming from, when I wanted to install an instrument in the old days, when I used my traditional legacy way of putting instruments out in my plant, I'm taking six or nine months, and I'm now down to can give, I wouldn't say a two hours in a typical implementation. This, you know, probably is a one-off or, you know, five-off. But typically, using my wireless network, I can do it in weeks rather than months. Uh, here's another application of a wireless instrumentation. Uh, this was, um, in the, uh, uh, previously, we were using a mechanical device to measure our rotating rake heights 
and now we have come up with a way of um, basically going out there and installing a wireless differential pressure transmitter to give us a reading of rake height. Rake height. I mentioned um, doing, rap doing quick testing when we have requests from our process engineers to go out there and um, monitor process conditions. This is, um, we are doing a DP cell measurement to me um, give us a pressure drop across a heat exchanger. And again, we are able to do such uh, installation in days rather than months. So like everybody else, we're moving in the direction of advanced analytics. And we have um, a common installation of um, process control, instrumentation, and also advanced process control applications and MES across all our alumina refineries. But we want to go to the next step you know, use big data and advanced analytics. And we are sure we are going to have a lot of data gaps where we are going to be asked, why aren't we doing this measurement here? And in the future, we know that we'll be able to install wireless devices to give us the data measurements that we need to close that gap. So I'm going to end run through this presentation quickly. Um, so I'll go through the journey that we had with wireless. So in 2014, we established our ISO 100 wireless as our global standard. We spent that year making sure that we had great engineering standards in-house and that we had simple things like a wireless preferred equipment list. We deploy our standard wireless training modules for all our loca locations globally in 2014. In the 2015, 2016 timeframe, we, we went and did our wireless instrument deployment. Uh, we established a wireless advisory board in-house to provide us with governance for wireless technology implementation. We also develop a wireless instrument selection criteria to make sure that our engineers knew when to use wireless as against WAD solution. Because even though I'm touting wireless instruments and wireless devices, um, at our locations, we aren't comfortable enough to use wireless in critical process control application. So for like um, simple control, like a level in a water tank where, you know, if our controls don't work for whatever reason, we'll spill some potable water, we don't have a problem. But if, you know, when it comes to more complex applications, we aren't there yet where we are using wireless instrumentation. In, um, in the 2017, 2018 timeframe, we're going to be supporting a corporate initiative we have going to um, implement, a, um, okay, so we have this project where in the future we're going to have a connected worker in all of our locations. And I know connected worker means different thing to different people, but I won't go into the details at this presentation, but our wireless network would facilitate us doing that. We also are going to develop some generic ISO 100 wireless serial interfaces for our small PCs. For 2019, 2020, we're going to do the industrial IoT and data analytics, and we hope to have rapid deployment of new sensors. And for the future, it's more wireless. Well, hopefully, we'll have a more mature 
um, wireless environment where we can trust wireless instrumentation to have more wireless and less wired sensors and to have a connected workforce. Uh, thank you for bearing with me. <laughs> uh.